Welcome back to another video, guys. Oh, where is it going? So as you can see by the title of this video, we are going to be talking about the top five best beginner reptiles, in my opinion. And he is not on that list. Definitely do your research. Um, this is not a care guide in any way. I've never kept any of these reptiles. I just wanted to recommend these reptiles to new people in the hobby and um, because they're not very well known. Anyways, let me stop doing the intro and let's get into the video. All right, number five, Central American banded geckos. Now I know what you're thinking, that's a leopard gecko. Well, although they look very similar, um, their care requirements are very different and they come from different places in the world. So these geckos are far less well known than leopard geckos. They are terrestrial, they won't be spending uh, much time in the trees, if any at all, because they don't have sticky toe pads like a crested gecko would. What I really like about these guys is they have quite an attitude. That may be due to the fact that a lot of them are actually imported from Central America. Since they come from Central America, they will need higher humidity requirements. Most people that own these guys recommend a range from 50 to 70%. I would not go with the 10 gallon. Uh, these geckos are more active than leopard geckos and leopard geckos require a minimum enclosure size of a 20 gallon. So I would probably say Central American banded geckos should have a minimum enclosure size of 20 gallons as well. All right, number four, corn snakes. Corn snakes come in tons and tons of different morphs. My personal favorite morph is the strawberry corn snake. I know a lot of people keep corn snakes in 20 gallons. Um, I don't agree with this. I think they should have more room. Um, something like a 40 gallon would be much better in my eyes. So corn snakes eat mice. That's what a lot of snakes eat, but um, they, they eat mice. They need low humidity. People recommend between 30 and 50%. So a good substrate you can use is aspen shavings. It's literally wood shavings from a tree that will not give your reptiles respiratory infections. You do need additional heat for corn snakes. People always say use heat mats rather than heat lamps. So yeah, number four, corn snakes. Number three, Peter's banded skinks. These are amazing skinks. So they are super tame. They don't try to run away from you that much. Um, they're not very fast. I mean, you can see in Clint's video right here, they're not moving very much. And that one is a wild cot. Peter's banded skin. That's something I find really, really crazy because mostly like wild cut things are pretty crazy. They're running all over the place, but these, not at all. I would say these are one of the most tame lizards out there. I mean, if you get a captive bred one, I can't even imagine how tame that would be. But that brings me to our problem with these guys. They are almost 100% wild caught. It's not good. They do not breed a lot in captivity. That may be due to the fact that it's pretty hard to tell the sex of these skinks. One way that we kind of determine their sex is by their heads. Uh, the males tend to have much larger heads, um, more bulky heads, and then the females tend to have more slim heads and they're kind of less robust overall. So these guys are omnivores. They will eat uh, different vegetables, some fruits, crickets and they can even eat eggs like scrambled eggs so you may hear with a lot of reptiles people saying don't use sand that is a very common thing and it's not a very good substrate to use for many reptiles that is true but for these skinks that is not the case these skinks come from very sandy parts of africa they love to burrow in the sand they'll be hidden most of the time so if you want to see your reptile this may not be the reptile for you but they're very fun to take out and um, sometimes see walking around the enclosure at night. But yeah, number three, Peter's Bandit Skinks. All right, number two, Antaresia. Now I know this is a whole group of snakes and they all are different, but their care is pretty much the same and you can kind of just pick which one you want. So in this genus, there is the Spotted Python, the Children's Python, the Ant Hill Python, and the Stimson's Python. Ant hills are the smallest one and they are also the hardest to find. 
the, uh, they are going to be very, very expensive, around uh, like $800. But if you want one of the Anthresia that isn't as expensive and a little bit bigger, you can go with any of the other three. My personal favorite is the children's python. Some people out there would say, oh, bald pythons, they're, they're a beginner snake. Four by two by two, that's a lot of space. You can keep any of these four in a 40 gallon breeder, but they're not gonna move as fast as something like a corn snake. They are pythons and they're just gonna move around pretty slowly and they're good for beginners too. Like I said, 40 gallon breeder would be just fine. Decently high humidity. You might wanna use something like Eco Earth for your substrate. And then you're gonna want a place where they can bask. You should probably give them the opportunity to climb a bit. Yeah, they're super awesome snakes. Um, I hope to have one someday, that would be awesome. Before we get to number one, today's video is sponsored by, nah, I'm joking, I don't. Number one, the Saracenorum gecko. So these geckos are really similar to crested geckos. They're actually in the same genus. So crested gecko's scientific name is Coilophus ciliatus, and then Saracenorum gecko's scientific name is Coilophus saracenorum, also known as Saras. Now the reason I put these guys before crested geckos is because number one, they don't drop their tails as easily. Now if you know a thing or two about crested geckos, you know that they drop their tails very easily. If you pull on that thing, they're gonna drop their tail. If you pick them up and they don't wanna be handled right then, they could drop their tail. If they're not feeling like they wanna have a tail anymore, they'll drop their tail and they don't grow it back. Now, Saracenorum geckos are way less likely to drop their tails than crested geckos. I know some reptile keepers may be scared of a reptile dropping its tail. Okay, my favorite morph of Saracenorum geckos is the white collar, but there are many, 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 many more morphs of crested geckos than Saracenorum geckos. I think the white collar Saracenorum gecko beats out every crested gecko out there. The thing is, Saracenorum geckos, especially the white collar ones, will be more expensive than crested geckos. Of course, it depends on what morph of crested gecko you're buying. There are some very, very expensive morphs of crested geckos out there. I, pl I plan to get one very soon. Anyways, let's be real here for a second. They eat crested gecko diet. I love animals that eat crested gecko diet. Uh, morning geckos, crested geckos, gargoyle geckos, Saracenorum geckos. Lichianus geckos, Chihua geckos. There's a lot of geckos that eat crested gecko diet. Again, two most popular brands, Rapashi and Pangea. So yeah, you're gonna want high humidity because these guys do come from New Caledonia. Higher heat is going to kill your gecko faster than colder heat with these geckos. If you wanna know how to care for morning geckos, got a care guide. Okay, it's this one. It is this one. All right, I think I should start wrapping up the video. Number one, Saracenorum geckos. If you want to see more reptile content on this channel, go subscribe and um, post notifications on. No, it's this. And then Instagram. I've got an Instagram. I gotta post on it more. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.